so today I'm finally going to get round to doing a video on my West German NBC suit or just Bundeswehr sort of modern German NBC suit. So it comes in a bag like this, hopefully it's all in there because sometimes bags like this I can't get it stuffed back in. So it's kind of like a zip bag that's made from some sort of I guess waterproof material. So that's what it says very faded on the thing, as you can see Verk, so I guess that's like factory manufacturing plant. Um, then a few numbers and nothing really interesting. The gloves I always use in NBC suit videos, the ones I really like, are the gloves from this set, but I keep those separately because I use the gloves more than I actually use anything from the suit. Out of all the NBC suits I have, this is probably the most comfortable one. Um, at the moment, anyway, if I get a modern, more modern suit, that might take the cake. But anyway, so we have in here the trousers and the top. Let's just pour that out. So obviously the trousers always go on first of NBC suits. So let's do that. So as you can see, comically big trousers and it's got suspenders attached to the back, which is what we want. So let me go into these. Now these are the kind of trousers that you get um, with lots of these suits. Uh, that have the modern ones that are kind of like the felt, heat charcoal kind of stuff inside. So they're expired in that sense. Um, you know. However, they would still be useful for a lot of things. These are incredibly water resistant or waterproof. I've used these in really wet weather when I didn't want to have a really sort of um, heavy, you know, oil skin style raincoat on, which would be, um, you know, not great. So, obviously, these pop over your head and they've got a little clasp in them which attaches to the trousers. So let me do that now, if I can get them to open wide enough to actually go onto the trouser section. These are a bit fiddly. They're not awful, but they are a bit fiddly. Okay, now let's do this other one. Yeah, that's that bit. And then pull those tight and clamp both of these down. Right, that's that there. So, these will look a bit silly, but let's uh, hand the camera down. As you can see, I've got those clasped on there. Now, there's the kind of Velcro-y bits on here. The nice thing with Velcro on these is you can actually have the Velcro done up prior to putting these on. And they actually, you know, still let your foot go through. It's not the ones where you have to constantly keep do doing and undoing the Velcro. Um, as you can see there, German flag on it. Um, so it's West German or Modern German, not East German. Because uh, I've heard some people claim these are East German. But these are far too nice equipment to be East German. Okay, let's pan the camera up and do the top half of it. Um, the only thing with this is I don't have my M65 gas mask handy so I can't show it you with the actual mask it would have come with. Let's undo the zipper thing on the hood. This is kind of, to me, reminds me a bit of the British Mark III NBC suit. The only difference is the quality of the material is much nicer than the British suit. It's made to be thicker, which again would mean that um, it's going to be a bit warmer to wear, but it's you know made from a really nice material. So let's get this on. Hopefully I don't get too much charcoal on my hair and my face. I've definitely just got a bit in my eye because my eye's stinging. Okay, so now let's get this on. At the bottom there's another one of these drawstring things that I've fully undone. Um, that you obviously need to tighten once you've got it on. So let's get my arms through. I think there's a big spider's web there. Or is it the material falling apart? Yeah, it looks like I've got a spider's web on it. I don't know if the spider's inside the suit or outside the suit. Hopefully he's not in it. Uh, that's really sticky and hard to get off. Okay. So as you can see, that's that there. So. Here's the suit. So this is where you'd have, obviously, your mask. And then what you do is when your mask's on, I'll demonstrate with a mask in a minute. You would do the drawstring up and lock it in place where you want it to fit the mask you're wearing. But obviously these would have been designed with M65 masks and I assume they work with the M2000 masks as well. Already getting quite warm in this. And then at the bottom let's pan the camera down. We have got our other drawstring. So what we do is we would tighten this. There we go. And... Then, I mean, obviously you could tighten it more than that, but the point of this, and there's another one there, 
I think that's just to give you a bit of a better level of protection. The point of these obviously is just to make the suit pull a bit closer to the body so it's harder for chemicals to get in because remember when people talk about gas weapons they're actually talking about vapour not really gas which is why it's easier to um, make a chemical suit work in conjunction with it. So obviously I'd need to tighten these up a bit but these are the ones that work the gloves. So let's just undo the velcro on these and again I always hate these because it's really hard to get the gloves on and then um, you know, do these up properly. So let's do the left hand glove first. I've got a watch on, which I don't know if you're meant to really have a watch on when you're doing chemical gloves. So the idea is that you tuck the glove into the sleeve like that. I mean, I, in theory, I guess it would be better to have the glove over the top, maybe, but again, this is where it depends which way the chemical is going to be running down your suit. Um, so anyway, that's that one attached like that. Yeah, that would be pretty good. I guess you just don't lift your hands up like that. So if you went to surrender when there's a NBC scenario, that might kill you. Um, and then, yeah, so this probably is the better way of doing it. But then you might want to put duct tape or something around the uh, arm sleeve once you've done it. And this is where it's always really difficult if you're right-handed to get the right-hand glove done up properly. So let's see if I can do that. The only good thing of this one is that... Yeah, that. But although it's still not as good as I'd like it, on these suits the Velcro tab is big enough that even when you've got bulky gloves on you can actually do it up properly. So now you want to see it with a mask. Now what I'll do is I'll go grab my Israeli M15 because obviously I don't have the um, M65 available but the M15 is basically a better M65 anyway. So let me just undo this. And The good thing of the big buttons on these is you can do them, undo them even when you've got... Um, you know, the suit like this. So let me go grab the mask, put the mask on, we'll do the suit up over the mask and then you can see it. Okay, so now let me attempt to get this mask on with all my other gear on. That's thankfully uh, gone on fairly easily, but <laughs> trying to pull these uh, straps isn't going to be the easiest job in the world. I'll just do it well enough for the video. There's always that annoying thing of the Israeli mask where the rubber wants to fold in, which is really uncomfortable. So you have to get the fold out before you... Uh... Yeah, okay, so that's the mask on. Let's get the hood over. And as you remember, I've complained before that the Israeli mask is dumb because it has this bit here, which doesn't work properly with NDC hoods. But now let's uh, do the hood up. The problem here is I don't think the hood really does up tight enough. Yeah, that's as tight as it's going to go, which is too loose. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. The hood could really do with actually tightening up more. I mean, you can probably do this until it gets tight enough and then do this up. But the drawstring, I think, works better on the British Mark III NBC suit for that. And again, although these are big enough that you can do them with gloves, they're still awkward. Let's pull the gloves off, because as I said, I hate doing this with gloves and we're not in a real NBC scenario. So, let's just try it now. Can I get this even tighter? If I just get that down a second. The problem is the straps and everything as well always get caught on these masks. Which is why sort of the Avon style design I think is a lot better with straps where they don't get in the way so much if you know what I mean. All the helmet style masks like GP5s. Big buckles on the mask kind of makes them not work well with helmets and um, NBC suits. So let's leave that exhale valve uncovered there so we don't inflate our NBC suit. And then we'll tie this one up. Put that as tight as we can get it. Okay, now let's put the clamp into the clamp position, if that's what the correct word is, but you know what I mean, so it doesn't move on its own. Okay, and then, hopefully that'd be good enough. I mean, this is the thing with an NBC scenario, good enough is probably not good, you know, enough, but... There you go, so, West German NBC suit. Yeah, this is a pretty good one in terms of comfort. 
It's a bit warmer than the British Mark IV suits and Mark III suits, so you might prefer those in terms of comfort, but the material on this is really good. Some of the things I really like about this NBC suit is you've got a big pouch on the front here. I know some others have this, but that's handy, so you can put stuff in the pouch there. And there's pouches on the legs as well. So, again, you can store stuff in the leg of the suits. Now, as I said, because these are expired charcoal suits, I wouldn't really want them. Let's just see if I can get that tighter. I bet I can if I you know, do it almost manually, uh, like about. Okay, now pull that in. Again, maybe the suit's designed for somebody a bit fatter than me. Although well, those sort of one size fits all suits. Um, just go back a bit so it doesn't look like I'm jerking off when I get this done up. Yeah, that's not going to go much tighter, to be honest. So do that there. So there you go. So yeah, as I said, this isn't the most comfortable suits, but it's pretty damn comfortable. Out of all my suits, I think in an NBC scenario, this is the one I'd actually like to wear the most, but I'm already getting very humid and sort of sweaty with just a vest on under this. So if I had my entire field uniform on under the suit, I would not be comfortable at all. So this that's the problem with a suit like this. It's the charcoal impregnated suit that's meant to let air through. But at the same time, it's, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of a good way of putting it. As, as much as it's letting air through, um, it's not letting enough through that it cools me down. So you kind of think, just go with a rubber suit, which would offer the same level of discomfort, but would give you better protection. But these are good suits, and I'll just demonstrate it is actually waterproof under the tap. Hopefully you can see there's a sink there. So let's turn the tap on and put the sleeve under and you can hopefully see the water is just running off of that like that my arms totally dry underneath so if I then sort of shake that off actually I think the water might have compromised the suit slightly then yep my arm is it's soaking through so uh no, this suit no longer works. This would be useless for an NBC scenario, so scratch that. And as you can see, I've now got a wet t-shirt competition vest on because this thing has leaked. Um, so yeah, no, this is why I don't like charcoal NBC suits. I'm kind of glad that was demonstrated. It worked for a bit and then the water suddenly started flooding through. So yeah, the issue with these are that um, the material in the actual suit is not as good as rubber and I keep sort of saying that to people is that these suits are kind of good but the issue is under heavy chemical warfare use the suit would get you killed because the lining of the suit you know doesn't block chemicals for all that long um, you can actually see there as well where some of it's gone through let me see if I can show you on the actual suit I've used this in the rain before and it's actually worked as I was saying earlier in the video so yeah, there you go, there's a good example of it. Um, so, you know, this is the thing, that these suits, um, basically, I think they work to a point and then they just suddenly stop working. Um, whereas the rubber suits don't, unless they obviously rip, so, you know, there's that. So, would I recommend getting one of these? Well, they're kind of cool, but as you can see, I'm now very wet, because the actual... Um, suit has stopped working so um i don't really know what to say on it to be honest uh you know they they're cool but again my i've had more success with my british mark 3 and mark 4 suits this like i said before this is probably one of my most comfy nbc suits in a way um you know the quality of it's very good but again it has a problem where when you buy these they're pretty much expired and at some point they're just going to suddenly stop working like this one did so when people laugh at the old rubber suits, I don't think you should, because these suits, um, you know, this is a problem with them. At one point, as you're suddenly going to go, like this one did, the water will become too much for the material they coat the suit in, because, again, it's meant to be breathable, and then it's compromised and you're doomed. So there we go. As you can see from my wet T-shirt, that's what happens when um, one of these suits suddenly stops working. Uh, you get very wet. So, there you go. The uh, West German NBC suit, or modern German NBC suit, has sort of failed this test. Again, when they're new and in good condition, they're fine. But for actual heavy NBC use, they are nowhere near as good as the actual um, 
sort of old ruggerized CVRN suits because at some point they will be compromised and then all the chemicals will come through very very quickly. <laughs>